Hi, everybody. Welcome to day two of this three day eco printing in the Dirty Pot Boot Camp. If you joined me yesterday, a thank you a thousand times. I have been absolutely blown away by the response to the first session. I've been inundated with comments, with emails, with messages, and it's wonderful to connect to so many of you in different parts of the world. So thank you so much. And um, please make sure to just drop me a comment here. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And that at the end of this week, I'm going to collate all the responses and see where about in the world everyone is joining from. So the first question is, who am I and where do I live? My name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist based in rural Ireland and felt making and eco printing are my passions. I absolutely love sharing with everybody how to achieve crisp, clear and colorful prints on fabric in a simple and natural process without using powdered mordants wherever possible. So very health conscious uh, and environmentally mindful. So yesterday, what I did was I actually answered in session one, the top question that people ask about eco printing. So if you didn't see session one in this three part series, I do urge you to view that because the, the top question that I get asked constantly is how to achieve crisp and clear prints when eco printing. Now that can either be in the dirty pot or for people who use powdered mordants too. Everybody is interested in achieving crisp prints. So I'm going to recap very briefly on yesterday. I discussed how to prepare your fabric. And yesterday we were talking about protein-based fabric and that's the same today. So protein-based fabric is fabric that comes from an animal. Something like silk, such as the silk scarf I'm wearing, wool, cashmere, mohair, anything that's animal related. Tomorrow in video number three of the series, I will be doing a brief overview of plant-based fabric, things like linen and cotton. But for videos one and video two, for anybody who is a total eco-printing beginner or new to eco-printing without traditional powdered mordants, so new to the dirty pot eco-printing process, I cannot urge you enough to strip things back to the basics and keep things simple. So once you understand the basics about how fabric choice, fabric preparation, using suitable vegetation, bundling tightly and processing for the correct amount of time, et cetera, et cetera. Once you discover all of that, it becomes very much easier to develop your practice and experiment with different things. So <clears throat> yesterday I discussed the basics and I explained why I feel that onion skins are, well, they're a top recommendation of mine, and I feel essential for somebody who's new to start with, because rather than trying to see does different vegetation from your own area work or not, it's important to get success right from the beginning and identify whether you are wrapping your bundles tightly enough or not. There's no point trying all sorts of leaves if you don't have the basic process, you know, if, if you can't work simply using the basic process. So something that I didn't share yesterday is the fact that prints from the same vegetation will look different on different fabric. And that's something that I'd like to share with you now. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to share just a very short little a video clip of how onion skins look on different fabric because I did do um I, I showed some pictures of onion skins yesterday but I never mentioned the fact that they would look different on silk on on wool etc etc so let's just go with this so I here we have a Nuno felt skirt. So this Nuno felt skirt is created using wool and silk. And here we have um, 
a silk scarf and this has got a much more reflective look that silk scarf was wrapped on a copper pipe whereas on a matte silk the onion skin prints look very much more flat and on silk chiffon when it was rolled around a rusty pipe the prints are very much more vibrant and the little white dots there are cotton and they haven't absorbed the dye color so the prints on a fine fabric may look less defined, but they actually are nice and crisp. This is onion skins on felt. And here are onion skin prints on upholstery wool from a recent collaboration with Anna Ospina. So depending on the fabric, you may get, get shimmery ones on a silk that has a, a reflective nature. You can get very matte results on something like a silk noil. You can get deep and intense results on, on wool, but the different fabric gives different effects. And that is very important to know. So <clears throat> there are soft leaves that I find can give really good eco printing results and we all live as I know from where you tuned in from yesterday we all live in different time zones different parts of the world and we have different growing conditions so that's another reason onion skins are great to start with but something that most people probably have access to if not in their own garden but from a florist that would be rose leaves and rose leaves give excellent prints as do blackberry leaves and for me blackberry leaves are wonderful because they grow wild here in Ireland in the hedgerow and it's very very easy for me to have access to blackberry leaves so um I find it doesn't matter whether the leaves are turning color or they're green, they always give me good prints in the dirty pot. Here they are on lamb's wool. The darker colored side is where the back of the print made contact with the fabric. And this here is Nuno felt, but raspberry leaves and rose leaves give wonderful prints as well, very consistently. In Ireland, I love sycamore, which is known as Acer pseudoplatinus, and that's also known as sycamore maple in the United States. And you need to position some leaves up and some leaves down on your fabric because the back of the leaf releases more dye than the front. And you really want to end up with beautiful effects and to create a balanced print. Now, <clears throat> eucalyptus leaves are some leaves that many of you know. Some of you may have access to them, some of you may not. When I started eco printing, there were no eucalyptus trees that I knew of near me, but I've actually planted over 900 trees here on my property now. So I'm in the lucky position I have easy access to them. But many of you know that eucalyptus leaves give very good red color. However, it's so important to understand that not every eucalyptus leaf prints red. It's also important to understand that in the dirty pot, if you're trying new eucalyptus vegetation, it really may not release its red color until between four and five hours consistent boiling in the pot. It's really amazing. Suddenly the leaf, the leaf prints may turn from a brownie, very uninteresting color to a slightly orangey color after four hours. And then if they get five hours in the pot, they're a sharp red. So I recommend if you do want to try eucalyptus leaves and you don't know the variety of the tree, you work backwards. You start by printing some samples and you give the bundles five hours processing time. And based on the results you've got then, if you do have a good red, you know that the, the leaf is releasing that dye color. Possibly you can reduce the time to four hours or three hours, or maybe even two and a half hours, but you have to start from a point where you can identify whether that leaf is going to release red. Now I have a series of, or, or I have a series of pieces of fabric, obviously that I have eco printed using my own eucalyptus leaves and some give wonderful prints and some don't. So I'm just going to share a few named varieties of eucalyptus that I have grown here at Clashine and that I know give consistently good red prints. These 
leaves, these few limited eucalyptus trees that I'm sharing here, they give great reds after two and a half hours. Some of them even after two hours. And in my upcoming ebook, which is releasing this Thursday, I'm going to have lists of vegetation for all different parts of the world. So whether you're living in Australia, New Zealand, South America, Asia, I will have a list of vegetation to share with you that I have found works very successfully in different parts of the world. But here are just a few of the eucalypts that will give you good red after limited processing time. So not only do the leaves print, but the bark actually, and the seed pods and the buds from eucalyptus trees and the twigs, they all release beautiful color. This could be as an eco print, or you might add some of them to the pot. And they don't need traditional powdered mordants to help fix the color. So when you work with eucalyptus as a dye or eco printing material, the prints are fully washable. Here you can see little short red eucalyptus parvi folia leaves and bark on upholstery wool that was processed in a cast iron pot. And eucalyptus parvi folia, they release excellent red colors after two and a half hours submerged in the dirty pot. The thin prints at the top are eucalyptus nicolii, and then the round leaves are eucalyptus gunnii, but it's a named variety called azura. They also give excellent prints. But many eucalyptus never release red. And these lovely greens I got from an unidentified tree in Australia. And the only way of identifying which color the individual trees release is by doing what I suggested and taking time to experiment for yourselves. And one tip that I would recommend is don't mix all your eucalyptus leaves from different trees in the one bag or box when you're gathering them. Identify individual trees and just try the leaves from that one tree. Because as I mentioned yesterday, different growing factors affect the results that you will get from your vegetation. So that could be the acidity of the soil, the age of the tree, and um, the actual weather conditions at that particular time. So it's very, very important to understand that and just try leaves from one individual tree, then move on to another tree and document your results. So the final thing I would like to say today is that as I've mentioned before, and do please drop a comment and let me know which part of the world you're, you're living in. We're living in different time zones. So we all have access to fresh, fresh vegetation or stored vegetation at different times of the year. And uh, if you're getting value out of this video, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell to get future and regular updates. I do actually have a video already in my eco printing playlist and that shares a lot about saving and storing vegetation for future use but i would just like to say now that you can store leaves dry you can freeze them you can press them if you want to and you can reconstitute them for future use and reconstituting is very very simple if they are tough leaves such as eucalyptus, I would soak them in water, in warm water, and that will get them quite soft and pliable very quickly. Or I can soak them in cold water overnight. With leaves, with softer leaves, I don't tend to save many of them myself because I have easy access to blackberry and rose pretty much 12 months of the year here in Ireland. But I would say that soft leaves only need to be reconstituted for as long as it takes to make them flexible. Eucalyptus leaves could stay for months in buckets, but other vegetation needs just a shorter time, just enough to make it flexible. And in order to get crisp prints, I would then dab the leaves dry with a towel or something. Because if you're putting really wet soaking leaves onto your fabric, if you watched session one, I did say your fabric needs to be damp, but if it's too wet, you're going to get blurry prints. So you really don't want to be putting down very wet vegetation onto your fabric. Another thing you can do 
is you can actually give your leaves a short soak in rust water and that will modify the colors that you achieve but again I would give them a little dab so that they're not too wet going down onto your fabric. So I hope that this short presentation today has been helpful, that it's given you some tips and information about leaves that you may well be able to use regardless of where you live in the world. There also is some vegetation that you can use from your kitchen and um, that would include turmeric root. You can slice that and you can get wonderful prints from that and uh, you can add a little sprinkling of black tea onto your bundles and the black tea will also print. But tomorrow I'm going to be sharing with you in the third video of this series how to print on cellulose fabric using one simple method and again without powdered mordants. And then on Thursday I will be happy to answer questions live. I'll be live streaming on Thursday and there will be the release of the ebook. So thank you very much for joining me today. Drop your questions into the chat, into the comments below, and I will be happy to answer them. And please do make sure to watch video one of the series if you're interested in eco printing and uh, working in the dirty pot, obviously. Uh, watch video number one, and then I hope you'll join me tomorrow. So over and out from Clashine, and thank you again. <laughs>